What's up, Jones Bones? It is your girl, Unitedly Random, and I am back to talk a little bit about a video that I have posted recently. It had some surprising responses, and I wanted to like go ahead and, without going into too many details, kind of explain my point of view. Um, which I think is really silly, and I also think that if anyone had a problem with what I said, it could always be a conversation because in the entire video, I spoke about how this is my point of view and how this is a conversation. But um, some people did not take it as that. And without going into too many details, we're going to talk about the general reason of why I have labeled myself a racist person. Right after this intro. It was at this moment that he knew. so we are back now I know we are in the area where I usually like wash my face we're not washing my face right now I'm giving my face a rest before I start the new product you guys should keep an eye out today or tomorrow I should be opening it and then we should be at you know right at business you know starting the new product I'm gonna try to get into the habit of using it before the new year um, so that when the new year comes around we just continuing it okay we're not don't stop ever stop you feel me but Back to the uh, the problem at hand, and like here's the thing with long hair, y'all. I always I don't like stuff touching my shoulder, so I keep flipping it back. Okay, um, but the problem at hand is my usage of saying like, oh yeah, I'll claim being racist. Why? Well, I claim being prejudiced. That's the thing that I really claim being. And the reason I claim being prejudiced is because I say that I do not trust white people. Now. It's something that I just don't do. And honestly, uh, it really comes down to the people who actually understand, the people who are actually willing to understand, that can compute what I mean when I say that I don't trust white people. Um, as a black person coming from a history of people having bad experiences, like my mom waking up to crosses burning in her front yard. Cause you know, it wasn't a hundred years ago. I grew, well, I grew up in the South and my mama is a little bit older. My daddy, you know, being a sharecropper, you know, his father and whatnot, those are very directly tied to right after segregation and um, slavery. So it's not that far away ago the only reason that certain people feel so far away from it is because of race okay so I noticed that white people will feel a little bit further away from that because maybe in your mind I'm not doing that and that would happen in the past but in the black community like I said in my last video it is still we can still see the effects of it okay um which is being healed through the community um that's that's what we're doing our shadow work that's what we're healing but there's still effects of it and to just ignore that that has happened in a more previous circumstance to ignore how um how black people are still having the stream to be heard would just be ignoring the bigger problem and I think that certain people get to do that specifically white people or people who are not black you have more of a leeway to just forget about race because your identity isn't completely tied to your race but as a black person as a black woman my identity is completely tied to my race I cannot escape my race as much as someone who is white can escape their race okay because nowadays the only thing that white people really have to hear about is black people saying your ancestors your ancestors they and when i say they i mean white people they don't have to really interact with their ancestors in that manner but in the black community we are still interacting with the pain of our ancestors, which is why we have like the generational curse and we're trying to heal ourselves. So along those lines, the reason I, I say that I don't trust white people is because I don't think that white people will ever truly be able to understand what it is to be black. And I think that um, a lot of the times 
they prove my expectations, okay? It doesn't matter if you are family, you have proven my expectations. Like, um, for example, some of Stuart's family members have proven my expectations. Stuart is mixed. His family members are white, okay? Um, the constant jokes about black people is uncomfortable, but it's comfortable for them. Why? I don't know. I truly don't know. I truly don't get it. But um, let me tell you, when I say I don't trust white people and I'm laughing, it's because of you. It's because of the things that you'll do. You'll say, oh yeah, black lives matter. And then when you're in your house playing your games, you'll start making jokes about black people over and over and over and over. And it's okay for you. You guys are so bad with it that when you first met me, you made a joke. We went home, me and Stu went home. I told him that it made me feel very uncomfortable. The next time we met, Stuart let you guys know that I felt that you guys were somewhat racist and you dismissed it. Why? Because you have biracial siblings. How can I be racist? How can my joke be hurt the community how can what i'm saying hurt you you're just being sensitive in the last video i talked about biracial people and how they can have a seat at the table but they can't necessarily have a microphone me and Stuart have had that conversation multiple times it's because it is more so what is it called Stuart? a spectrum it's spectrum okay and if the black community is saying this hurts us and the biracial community speaks up and they're like, nah, it's not that big of a deal. The white people, and this is very general, this is very general, but the white people with the mixed, the mixed people, they're going to listen to the mixed people in their family. But that mixed person didn't necessarily have to go through all of what the completely black person has had to go through. And so if this mixed person says, oh, it's not that big of a deal, or you make these jokes about race around these mixed people and they suck it up because they have grown up hearing you say the same shit over and over and over, they just shrug their shoulders. Okay, well, it's just a joke. But then you take that same rhetoric, you take that same energy, and then you give it to someone who didn't grow up with you who is also black, who is saying that the things that you are saying are uncomfortable and you minimize it to just them being a snowflake, you are the problem. You are proving a point that when black voices speak up, they are dismissed for the mixed person's point of view. And if that is me gatekeeping, I wonder who put the rules in place, who put the actions in place for the black community to have to gatekeep? Who are the originators of gatekeeping? I'm pretty sure black people weren't like, let's be in segregation in the beginning. I'm sure black people weren't like, let's be your slaves in the beginning. Let's let like legitimately. So people are reacting to the actions. People are reacting to the colorism. People are reacting to people who appear more white, getting more of a status, more of a voice than the black people. Even me, even, even me, my skin tone in times gives me more of a voice. If I was a darker woman, I would be seen as more of a bitch because of how I run my mouth. So, when given all of that and put all of that together, the conversation still needs to be had. It still needs to be had. It's still an important conversation. I think it's funny. I think it's telling that you guys don't even know 
that the jokes you have made have made your brother uncomfortable because it's not a conversation. But let me tell you, imagine you were the only white person in the room with a bunch of black people and they made jokes about white people laughing in your face. The joke that anytime you come around is the joke that you have to hear. And let those same white people also take the stance of, I don't see color. If you do not see color, why am I always a joke when I come into the room? You have shown your ass. You have shown me, you have proven to me the point that white people cannot be trusted. Your actions have proven to me because the white people that are supposed to be the family, and in, in general, the family's supposed to care about you more than strangers. They have a little bit more closer ties to you. The white people that are supposed to be the family are ignoring the black voice. This is what's the problem with saying, I don't see color. And this is what people are talking about on TikTok. Even people from the biracial side are speaking up about trying to be a part of their black community and feeling isolated and also knowing and having grown up in a community that takes their blackness as a joke. Nobody's saying Stuart is not black. I'm also pointing out that if Stuart cut off his hair, he is a little, uh, what do you call it, babe? If you cut your hair, um, you look ambiguous, racially ambiguous. Stu is racially ambiguous when he cuts his hair. Now, if all of the racially ambiguous people said, I am also black, and also when people are asking conversations about the black community, why are black people so irritated about this? And why are black people so hurt about this? And a racially ambiguous person who never had to have that conversation, who never really grew up thinking too much about race like the black community, speaks up and people listen to him over black voices, that is the issue. The whole video the other day was to highlight, hey, if you are not for the cause, you are hurting the cause. It is a spectrum. If that person has been educated from another black person's point of view and has come to understand it as it is and has come to really, really be able to dive into that conversation and he's had that conversation with multiple black people so he can get multiple points of views. It's not just his opinion because in a certain way, his opinion will be flawed due to the way he was raised. If he's had that conversation, if he had that education, then he can speak. But he has to make sure to say that I am not speaking over the black community. He has to make sure to say when people are asking conversations about black people, he has to step up and say, well, I am biracial, but I've had a couple conversations. Why is it important to point out the biracialness? Is it important not to take away black voices? I think that this is a very interesting conversation. And like the last time I said, it's a conversation. But here's the thing. When you prove my point, don't be shocked. I saw you coming from a mile away with your insensitive remarks. I saw it coming a mile away. And whenever I spoke up about it, it was these new age kids are such snowflakes. 
or I have a mixed brother. I know about racism. But when a black person says that they're uncomfortable and you continue to do the thing that makes them uncomfortable, it's feeling very performative. And that's the thing. Black people can see that. When we have white people who are not performative, white people who want to learn, we're open to it. But you guys aren't those white people. Because instead of texting my husband about how racist I am, and how I want to be a certain type of way, you could have had that conversation with me. My voice does not matter because you automatically feel like you are right. What makes you more right than the black person who is saying that your actions are harmful to the black community when you make jokes about the black community? You want to isolate what I'm saying, but you don't want to look at the big picture. And that's cool because I didn't expect much from you from the get go. The white people who understand, understand. The biracial people who understand, understand. Ain't nobody gonna try to give it to you on a silver platter. Grow up. That is all. The fucks I will give for 2021 will never be for the people who do not have the time to listen to someone speak. The fucks I have for 2021 will never be for the people who think it's okay to constantly make jokes about race even when someone is clearly uncomfortable and if you think that your God-given right is to have a voice at the table when black people are trying to speak about their experiences you think you have the God-given right to speak over them you're part of the problem Because in your world where you don't necessarily understand that there's different levels to this and there's always a caveat and there's always a conversation, I have existed in that world for my entirety of my life. No one's trying to play games with you. Just because we haven't had this conversation face to face, no one's trying to play games with you. I still have these thoughts. I had the thoughts from the beginning, but I never brought up the conversation because I already knew it was worthless by your comfortability with the jokes that you made around me. I don't trust white people. I trust what I am given and a lot of the times I'm given bullshit. I'm not going to hold my tongue and stand back and be like, oh, they probably didn't mean it in that way or try to understand what the fuck you're trying to say with the words that you're saying. I'm gonna hear what you said, I'm going to compute it, and I'm going to move on. There is a difference between being ignorant and there is another difference between choosing 
to be a certain way. Ignorant white people can be taught, we can have that conversation and they can learn. But people who choose to be a certain way are people who have had interactions with black people throughout their life. No one ever opened up their mouth to say anything about the things that you're saying, even though at sometimes it can be a little uncomfy. Why? Because nobody really wants to have that conversation. Now I come onto my YouTube channel and I have that conversation every once in a while. Nobody's hating on me for having that conversation. Why? Because it's something that exists. Still growing up, didn't feel like it was in his place to speak up. It felt uncomfy to him for hearing certain things that you guys were saying. And the fact that it only matters if a biracial family member has said if it's okay or not when literally you are presented with a black person that says it makes them uncomfy. The fact that your biracial family member who grew up with you out trumps me, pretty much a generic black person, proves the point even more. You guys are disappointing. Very disappointing. But not to me. Because like I said, I scoped it from a mile away. You're disappointed. Disappointing. To your brother. And if that's what it takes for you to listen, to know that you are disappointing your brother, please know that you are still a part of a bigger problem. You can be raised with no tools or you can be raised with all the tools and then choose to use them wrongly. And you, my dears, are choosing to use them wrongly. Now this video wasn't initially supposed to be going out to my in-laws. I was just gonna come up here and just talk. But my heart felt like speaking. We're gonna leave this off with a tickety talk. Cause I like the tickety talk. But until next time, I'm not going to run away from these conversations anymore. Goodbye. Can we just be honest? I was never as bad as you made me out to be. You just needed me to be bad so you could justify how badly you treated me.